Ever since starting this YouTube channel, Jackson and I have been getting access to a lot of free computers that people are just giving away or just think they don't work anymore because they know we like to play around with computers. And this one right here is one of those computers that we got for free. This is a Dell XPS tower with an i7-860 in it. We don't know if it works, but what we're going to be doing is taking the system apart, cleaning it up a little bit, and see if we can get a system working out of this, and then maybe buy a new case and upgrade it with some new components to make it a very capable budget gaming PC for 2019. So how about we jump right into that after a word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by GVG Mall. They're a really awesome website that allows you to get access to Windows 10 keys and even Office 2016 and 2017 keys for you students out there at a very discounted rate compared to buying it straight from Microsoft. Buying keys and licenses from GVG Mall is very simple. Click the link in the description down below to head to either buy a Windows 10 key or an Office key. And once you purchase the key, you will be sent the key within a few moments. And then all you have to do is throw it into your given program. For example, if you're using Windows 10, just throw it into your Windows 10 machine that needs to be activated and boom you're running a fully activated version of Windows or whatever software you decide to license. GVG Mall has been nice enough to hook us up with a discount code so if you use code TB20 you can save 20% on whatever you use on GVGmall.com. So be sure to check the link in the description down below and special thanks again to GVG Mall for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so I got the computer up here and everything, but before we dive into this, I want to see if in this bag of random assorted memory that I have right here, if I have a couple of sticks of DDR3 memory, because I think there is, but even though majority of these are most likely going to be DDR2, DDR1, BS, I could have sworn there was at least one stick of DDR3 in there so we can upgrade the system from, well, at least 6 gigs of RAM uh, from the 4 gigs because 4 gigs of RAM in 2018, even on a really budget system like this, is really not going to cut it. And as you can see right here, I think we found ourselves the four gig stick we are looking for. So something I didn't know about this computer is Jackson actually had it configured with two two gig sticks for a total of four gigs of RAM. And it actually has Windows on it. So it's booting into Windows right now. We'll see if that actually posts which it seems like it's actually gonna post and I won't have to do any work at all. You know, it, it seems to be working so far. Um, the system is actually booting up. Not the fastest thing in the world. I'm gonna think about what we're gonna do to swap out this graphics card uh, to make it look a little bit more appealing and actually have some decent gaming performance and try to give this i7-860 uh, a little bit of life, even though it's a uh, pretty old processor at this point. But hey, uh, good news, we have the i7-860 rocking it here right now, and the memory is at 8 gigs of memory. Um, kind of weird that we're using three DIMMs, but uh, hey, gotta do what you gotta do to get that memory working, right? And as you can tell, that poor, poor hard drive Look at that thing, it's just pinging at 100%. That's the issue, man. That is the freaking issue with these systems. Now getting the system up and running without any issues was a really good start. I did not know if this computer was actually going to work, and now that I booted it up and it actually does work, we can start discussing the upgrades that I want to do other than just an SSD and RAM. As I mentioned before, this thing comes with an old ATI graphics card in it, which is definitely not capable for playing games in 2019, and definitely needs to be upgraded. So what I did was browse eBay and found a really awesome deal on a RX 570 for $86. And and I was totally right about the RX 570s being a better value for the money. I have a listing right here from a guy with an RX 570. Actually, it looks like an old mining rig stockpile. And he's selling them for 86 bucks a pop, which is crazy value for money. I may be taking a slight risk here because the guy um, clearly was using these as mining cards and that definitely didn't pan out for him. Um, so I'm kind of just throwing a fish in a barrel here on this one. But with eBay's buyer back return policy and how freaking buyer friendly they are compared to seller friendly, I think if I get this and it doesn't work out, I think I will be a-okay. So I'm perfectly fine spending the $86 on this graphics card to get some really awesome performance and save well over $40 compared to a 1063 gig. So uh, this seems to be a good price performance option and we are going to get this right now. 
crazy good value for the money. 1080p medium to high settings card, and it will actually pair pretty nicely with this i7-860 because the i7-860, as mentioned before, is an older CPU, but still has a lot of life left in it when it comes to playing games at medium to high settings 1080p, and it will pair pretty perfectly with the RX 570. One week later. All right, so it's actually been a few days since I ordered the RX 570 on eBay, and whether or not I'm wrong or not, I believe this is the RX 570, even though it's packaged in a very weird box. So we're gonna go ahead and open this bad boy up real quick. So inside here we have, well, an RX 570. Here we go, RX 570. Let's open this thing up and make sure it's actually in here. Very good condition. There's no dirt, there's nothing on it. This thing looks practically brand new. And with that graphics card in hand, the next obvious step was to take apart the Dell XPS tower, figure out exactly what form factor the motherboard is, and decide what case I wanna go with. I originally was gonna use a case that I had on hand in my basement that was being sent over from some companies, but all the cases that I had were all standard ATX form factor. And as you can tell, the motherboard that we got was not a standard form factor at all. It was actually more of an extended micro ATX, if that makes any sense at all. Um, and it would not fit or make sense in a full ATX case. That was honestly very frustrating because I really wanted this build to be done today, but it looks like I'm gonna have to wait a little bit after I order this case. And speaking of the case, this is the one I ended up going with, the Thermaltake Versa H18 tempered glass side panel case. What we're gonna be doing is using this PC case right here, slapping in that motherboard, and it's gonna look nice and snug inside a micro ATX form factor case, and then also upgrade the power supply with a power supply from Be Quiet, and then also throw in some fans from deep cool that are going to look really nice in this system and honestly make for one overkill i7 860 pc and give this thing a little bit of a rejuvenation that it most definitely deserves so now all we have to do is wait for the uh case to show up okay so it's been a little over five days since i ordered the case Amazon was taking forever for them to actually deliver it. So it actually did show up about two days ago, but I didn't have time to start the build. So we're gonna go travel into the depths of the storage area to uh, grab this case, take it upstairs and start working on this, well, interesting PC build. All right, so here is the uh, Thermaltake Versa case. Um, yeah, let's take it upstairs. Uh. Come on, let's go. Okay, should be ready to get this thing built now. Okay, so actually this PC is just about finished, but there's one thing I still need, which is an SSD, and once again, Jackson is hoarding all the hard drives. So in a few minutes, you'll see me transition to moving over to Jackson's to get the SSD, but just a quick glance real quick. Look how nice this looks. Ooh! boy. The case itself is really nice. I do enjoy this case from Thermaltake and right now I have these deep cool RF fans set to an orange profile. This looks really freaking clean. Cable management is not totally done yet. Um, I have a lot of it tied up but I just need to cut some of these uh, zip ties and everything but I'm still waiting for that SSD and then once we have that SSD we will be transitioning into uh, a little bit of a benchmarking sequence to see exactly how this i7-860 and RX-570 combo works in well 2019 titles. Got some goodies for me? Huh? Got some goodies for me? Oh, we're vlogging? Dude, we're vlogging this, Dude, right? What's up? All right. I got to use some business like cards. Oh my god. Anything so, SSD, card. yeah, is the SSD and the hard drive. Cool, cool. Yeah, one terabyte, right? Yes. All right, so we got the hard drive, SSD grabbed, and a couple power cords that Jackson bought extra. So, we should be good to go to finish this build.
PC build is finally complete. So let's talk about the benchmarks and what I feel about this i7 860 and RX 570 combo and why I don't really recommend it, but also recommend it at the exact same time. First off, let's see how the system performs. In games like Fortnite, PUBG, Overwatch, and Black Ops 4, you get really respectable frame rates at 1080p with a mixture of pro settings and medium to high settings. If you want to know what pro settings are, check the link in the description down below to the website that will link you to the pro settings for each individual game that you may want to look up. But in those settings, this system actually gets very respectable frame rates at 1080p. I was honestly a little bit surprised because of the base clock of the CPU being only at 2.8 gigahertz. Now, yes, it is being hindered by that CPU being only at 2.8 gigahertz and the motherboard that we have not allowing us to overclock it at all. So there is a downside when it comes to the CPU. But with an all-in-one solution like this that you get from something like an old XPS tower, and the fact that we managed to easily upgrade it, transplant it into a new PC case with a graphic card a new power supply and run it with eight gigs of ram and have really no issues at all and have a decent budget pc really makes for an interesting concept if you do look to replicate something like this now the thing is though i don't recommend you go out and try to find xps towers on places like ebay because they're incredibly overpriced for what you're going to be getting and especially when there's a lot of other offerings on the market that will deliver the similar performance numbers at a much better price that being the xeon x3440 which is a four core eight threaded CPU based on the same architecture as this i7-860 and comes in at a price point of like $16. And with a P55 motherboard and eight gigs of DDR3 memory, you're only spending around a hundred bucks for a CPU, RAM and motherboard combo, as opposed to buying a full XPS system, which really all you're gonna be taking out of that system is a CPU, RAM and motherboard and spending like the 300 to $200 asking price on eBay, you're really saving a lot of money going the Xeon route and in most cases actually getting better performance because of the unlocked CPU and the overclock ability that it comes with. But if you do stumble upon a Dell XPS tower with an i7-860, it is not total garbage. It's definitely worth considering upgrading and making into a budget system to maybe flip on the used market, which is what we intend on doing with this system. In total, we only invested about $140 in this PC after getting the PC for free, and we plan on listing this PC to be sold on Craigslist and other local listings in our area for around $300 US, with the idea of taking offers a little bit below $300 because in real value, I would personally pay about 250 but a pro tip when you're trying to sell stuff online is to list it a little bit higher so you do take offers and the buyer thinks he's getting a really good deal on you because he's making you settle for a cheaper price than you asked, but in reality, you were expecting anywhere between the 250 to $300 range. So if you're flipping PCs on the used market or flipping pretty much anything in general, that is a good rule of thumb to follow if you want to make the most money. But yeah, guys, overall, I am very happy with this PC and I want to give a big thanks again to Be Quiet. I apologize for the delay on the video using this power supply, but they did send over their Pure Power 11 power supply, which is an 80 plus gold power supply, which is totally overkill for a system like this, but honestly was put to good use in reviving this PC. And this power supply, regardless of its home, is doing a really good job at being a really awesome power supply and will be a good transplant unit for somebody who ends up buying the system and maybe wants to build a new system later down the line. They got a really good basis to start that new build with. So special thanks again to Be Quiet for the really awesome power supply that they sent over. And thanks again to you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, leave a like down below and comment flip PC in the comment section down below if you made it this far. What do you all think of the i7-860? Would you go out of your way to go get one? What do you all think about the Xeon processor lineup that I recommended? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Also, once again, if you are interested in getting a Windows 10 key for cheap, please check out GVG Mall and use the promo code in the description down below to save some money when picking up a Windows 10 key to activate that new gaming PC that you put together or for PCs that you're trying to flip on the used market. It's a great way to save money to get more money back into your pocket. Thanks again, guys, for watching this video, and hopefully I will see you all in the next one. Peace out, guys.